Look back, flip back a chapter, Isaiah 56. And you think about this. Salvation is not only of the Jews. It came to the Jews because Jesus came to the Jews. But you think about just the lineage of Jesus Christ. Tamar was from Canaan. She was a Canaanite. Well, now, wait a minute. She was the pure bloodline. No, 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 no. It's not blood. It's belief. What about Rahab? She was a harlot from Jericho. She got saved. She's in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Ruth, the Moabitess. We preached through Ruth. What an awesome story, right? Your strategic relocation for spiritual reasons. She went to the right place. God blessed her, right? She was a Moabitess. They weren't supposed to enter in the temple. She got saved. Bathsheba was married to a Hittite. She was probably a Hittite. She wasn't a Jew. She wasn't an Israelite. There's four women in Jesus' lineage you can point to and say, well, they don't have a pure bloodline. Hey, thank God it's not about a pure bloodline. Can you change your blood? No, but you can change your beliefs. You think about Esther. When men became Jews because of the fear of the Jews fell upon them. They changed their belief. They didn't change their blood. Look in Isaiah 56. God contrasts this. Verse number 1. Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. So he's saying, hey, there's a blessing in believing what the Lord has said and obeying him, right? The keeping of the Sabbath, he's not saying it as a work because that was a picture of salvation. Look at the next verse. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. He just said, a stranger that's not of Israel should not say he's not my people. He also just said, a eunuch that has no physical seed on the earth, don't say you don't have any blessings of God. Look at the next two verses. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant, right? They take hold of salvation. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons of the daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. You say, well, I don't have any children on earth. God's got a bigger blessing for you. Look what he says. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Well, wait a minute, that's a stranger. He said, don't say you're not my people. You're a stranger. You've joined yourself unto the Lord. You believe that covenant. He says, you are God's people. And you can't, you can't change that fact. This is Old Testament. This is Old Testament. How come the dispensationalists don't put this in their chart? How come they don't draw a little something? Oh, we got a little asterisk here on our chart. We don't know what to do with that. We better ask Dr. Schofield. Go ask Dr. Ruckman. Bury him. You know, pull him up out of the grave. Is it just for the Jews? No, it's all people. Look at verse number 7. Even them will I bring, bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Not just the Jews. For anybody that wants to join to the Lord, God has offered them the free gift of salvation. He died for the sins of the whole world. And that's an awesome thing. That's a beautiful thing. Look what it says in verse 8. The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel. Wait, outcasts of it. Yeah, you go into Israel today as a Christian. You go in with the New Testament and say, hey, let me tell you something. They're going to arrest you. They're going to kick you out. Right? Hey, I've been cast out of Israel. Right? You've been, the Israel of today, this, this nation state that is deceiving the world, they've rejected Jesus. And people say, well, they have special salvation. Right? Even back then they had the, the scribes, the Pharisees, they had people that were, that were doing it their own way, going against God. They're kicking people out. And look, he says, the outcasts of Israel, they still have salvation. Look, he gathereth the outcasts of Israel, saith, yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. That's salvation for everybody, for all the nations. Anybody at any time.
could have been saved by believing. That's always been God's promise. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to finish with this. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Listen, God's people are not those in Jerusalem or Israel. It's not a bloodline, and it's not believing, believing in their own way. It's only in believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter 2, he says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God. I don't care where you came from. If your trust is in the Lord, you are the people of God. And it's always been that way.